It'd be fair to say that there's a billion different ways to animate text on and off your screen. Each has their own pros and cons, and even I have thrown my own interpretations into the fray. However, sometimes it's the simplest solutions that feel the most elegant. And so in pursuit of an easy way to bring text in and out, I've stumbled on a solution that almost feels like it's cheating in its style and simplicity. So let's jump right in because animating text in this way is fast, efficient, and honestly, it's beautiful. We're here in a brand new project and we'll create a new composition. It doesn't really matter the details for it, but we'll grab the text tool and we'll type out our text like so. Next, we're going to add a expression control to our layer. So making sure it's selected in the timeline, we're going to go to effect expression controls and slider control. By hitting enter, we can rename this to animation because this is going to control our animation. And you can see it goes from zero to 100 on the slider. We're gonna set keyframes for it. So having our timeline at the very start, we're going to hit the stopwatch to set the keyframe for zero. And then moving forward in our playhead to about one second, we'll drag that up to 100. If we hit U on our layer, you can see those two keyframes are set there. Next, we're going to go and grab a mask tool by using the rectangle tool and then clicking in this rough center of our text layer, we're going to drag out a nice big box like so. Now, we're going to align the edge of our mask with whatever edge we want our text to appear out from. In this case, I'll do it from the top. So I'm going to line that up roughly with the top of my text like so. Next, we're going to add some expressions. Our first one will be on the anchor point. So selecting the layer in the timeline, we'll hit A, and that brings up the anchor point property like so. If we hold Alt and click on the stopwatch, we can now write ourselves a nice little expression here. And we're gonna start by uh, starting with square brackets. And then we're gonna start with one of my favorite expressions, the linear equation. So we'll type linear, the left parentheses, and then we're going to pick whip the animation slider from our effects controls. Now we already spoke that that goes between zero and 100. So we'll do comma zero comma 100 comma. And then we're saying the two values that that goes between. In this case, we're going to refer to the same properties uh, value that is set like so. So it'll be transform dot anchor point and then in square brackets, the number zero because there's two properties for our anchor point, one in the X direction and one in the Y. So zero and one. And now we'll hit comma and we want it to then finish when our um, animation slider goes to 100, we want it to go to zero. So we've got that there. We can now close off that linear expression by using the right parentheses. And then we'll hit comma because this does have two values. So rather than typing it all out, we're going to just duplicate the whole linear equation that we wrote just then. And we're just going to change the transform anchor point right near the end to a one. If we close that off with a square bracket and a semicolon, we're done with that. And you'll see, you know, if I drag this animation, uh, the anchor point and then drag through the animation keyframe, you can see it moves around like so. I'll reset the anchor point values for now. And now we're going to go and set an expression for our mask. By hitting M, it'll bring up the mask and then we can toggle this little arrow to bring up the other properties of the mask, and we're going to be writing an expression for the mask expansion. If we hold shift and hit A, it'll bring up the anchor point for our layer as well, the one that we just added some expressions to, and then we're gonna hold Alt and click the stopwatch for the mask expansion. We'll give ourselves a little bit of room there because we're going to define a couple of variables. We'll say var wide to define a variable called wide, we're going to say it is equal to, and then using the pick whip, we're going to select that first value of our anchor point property. So you can see there, it's, it's very familiar. We've been using it a bunch in this tutorial so far. We're going to say if that is less than zero, question mark. So we're setting a if conditional here. We're going to say that we want the variable wide to equal that same transform anchor point value. If we use the colon, we can say what well, we want it to equal if this condition is not met. And we're gonna say we want it to equal zero 
minus that same property again. So you can see we're referencing it where if that value is less than zero, we're going to equal that value. Otherwise, if it's not equaling that, then we're gonna go minus or zero minus that value to give us a negative version of that. We'll copy that whole thing and duplicate it. And we'll call this one high. And then we're just gonna change the value in the square brackets to be one, like so. Finally, we need to define what our value for mask expansion is actually going to be. And we'll just say it is wide plus high. Now this is really just a catch-all for when I'm animating in the left and right, or the x-axis, or animating in the y-axis, up and down. I'm not really going to be animating diagonally, so I'm not too concerned on this. One of these values is always going to be zero. So now that I've done that, what exactly does this expression and setup let us do? Well, you can see I've got the mask on the top, and if I drag the y value, which goes up and down, you can see suddenly my text disappears, but it's like it's disappearing into this box that doesn't really exist. So if I, and, um, I drag the anchor point all the way up and drag my playhead forward, you can see it comes down because we have animated that animation slider. In fact, I can select that animation slider keyframes and using some easing, make that movement a lot more smoother. I have an amazing tutorial on easing if you want to go more into that. So you can see now it kind of drops in and drops out. In fact, I can move forward, set another keyframe, move forward, set the keyframe to zero on the animation, and you can see now it comes in and goes out. Fantastic. Now, what's really powerful about this situation is that using this setup, I can really customize how I do this and make multiple layers. For example, this can be rotated in any direction without it being affected. You can see it's only on one layer, so if I'm creating multiple text layers, I'm not ending up with double the amount of work because I've got alpha masks or whatever it might be. Additionally, if I was to, say, make this two lines instead of just one, then you could go, all right, well, I need to animate it in. I need to mask out more. It's easy, as easy as going to wherever your animation slider is equal to zero and then going to the anchor point and just dragging it out until it's all... Um, hidden by that mask. So you can see, there we go, it's coming in nice and smoothly. Now say if I wanted to come this, uh, have this come in from the bottom, it's as easy as grabbing the mask, aligning the mask now to the bottom of my text, and then instead of going up with my anchor point, I'll drag it down, and you can see in a couple of clicks, that animation has been totally updated to come from the bottom. Similarly, I can do the same with the side, the side, rather than doing the Y property of our anchor point, we can go left or right. And so I'll go grab the mask, move the mask, say to the left edge of my text, and then with the anchor point, again, dragging it out. Now you can see that it's starting to also cut off from the bottom as well. And this is why our mask is quite large to give us the space where it is not cutting that off, so it actually is a nice smooth transition like so. Additionally, if I was to say I'm wanting it to come in from one side and then disappear off the other, I can definitely do that. I'll grab my mask, again say align it to the top, I'll show my um, values like so. I'll drag it off the top at the start and then I'll move forward into where it's fully visible and I'm going to set a keyframe for the mask and at the anchor point. Going forward a frame, I'll now change the anchor point value. You can see it was originally set to 118. I can just change that to negative 118 and I can move my mask path from being aligned to the top to being aligned to the bottom. Now when I show that coming in and out, you can see it still comes in from the top, but when it leaves, it goes out the bottom. So that's the power of being able to set this up and then I can easily just drag these keyframes to wherever I need to and change the text however I need to and it doesn't mess around with having to realign stuff. It's super fast in order to be able to set this up. Um, that's the advantage of it and that's why I use it for a lot of different client work. If you enjoy my videos and want to support me, I do have a Patreon, so feel free to buy me a cup of coffee through there. 
Otherwise, until next time, my name is Bench. Thanks for watching.